What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We're back on another episode. And I kind of feel like we're sort of putting the K in customs on this one. Finally get to sort of sink my hands into what is gonna be sort of an early 50s custom. This is a really good mate of mine, Travis from the uh, Jalopy Warehouse. On this episode, what we would like to cover is down in this area where you can see that nice rear white wall, we're gonna cover it up and we're gonna make sort of a, um, like a Foxcraft cruiser skirt. And so it's not gonna be like a sort of flush mount one. These ones kind of are a longer skirt. They kind of have a bit more, uh, bit more form and shape to them. And uh, you know, we're gonna make a really neat one to try and you know, replicate as if that tire's kind of not there. So you know, with those skirts kind of back in the early customs, um, like even Sam Barris's 50 Buick that he did, uh, he kind of had a very simple style one, but they just, it kind of gives the appearance as if there's a bit of motion to it. Trying to replicate a few of the body lines and, um, you know, going to try and eliminate that back wheel. And essentially, as soon as we put it on, it'll almost make it like it lowers the car. We're going to hammer form them, which is going to be really cool. We're going to be on the English wheel. I may even make a set of dies up for the power hammer to make a cool little lip on the bottom. You know, there's going to be a lot of fabbing involved with these and then we'll get them over, Mark's gonna paint them, and, uh, and then we're gonna install them with some, some sort of bracket system that we're gonna use as well. And uh, I think it'll be a really, really cool video. And this is kind of just the tip of the iceberg as far as where this car is gonna evolve to. And uh, yeah, I'm very pri privileged to be able to work on it. So it's gonna be pretty, pretty cool. So let's get into this video. Hey guys, just some exciting news as well. Um, we want to make sure that our t-shirts and, and um, you know, kind of our soft goods and stuff is being able to get across to everyone worldwide. We are now able to offer uh, free shipping over uh, $100 US and that way you can get a couple items from the, uh, from the website and we'll be able to ship it free for you guys. So make sure you jump onto our website, have a browse through and uh, if anything tickles your fancy, um, jump on and uh, yeah, support the channel. Thank you very much, you guys. All right, so first things first, what I wanna do to be able to do these cruiser skirts is we need like to lay up some sort of template and cut a few shapes out until we're really happy with kind of the overall um, profile of what we want to achieve. So I am just gonna use a piece of um, sort of core flute cardboard that we found out the back, but it'll just, you know, essentially just help me get a rough idea of, uh, of a shape we're trying to achieve. And what I'd like to do is I wanna run it sort of just in front of the wheel lip here, and then it's gonna roll up and it's just gonna travel just below the spear um, and then kind of come straight back here, come to where the bumper is and whether or not we just kind of end it here and then come down. Um, as well as the back rear quarter panel, obviously this is higher up than your, than your um, kind of front or rocker panel and that's pretty, pretty normal for a lot of car shapes. The, this kind of bit sits a bit higher. But what I'd like to do is actually kind of bring that skirt down maybe a little bit lower, almost if we were gonna make it parallel with the rocker panel down the front of the car. And again, that'll just make it look that much lower. And then if we can sort of achieve this sort of rolled edge, which we'll use with our MDF, we actually are using a 25 mil thick MDF sheet. Um, and then I will, do our initial profile, and then I can router around the edge, sandwich our metal between it, and then I'll have a little flange that'll come out all the way around, and we can kind of hammer and dolly that, and that'll kind of give us our shape. So what I'm gonna do is just make a few measurements, and then probably a couple, couple different um, tries, and uh, until we kind of achieve what we really want, and then we'll just tape it up there. I kind of push the, push the car as far back into the shop as possible, so we can kind of stand back and get a really nice profile of it. Um, might lower the back a little as well, just to see what it's gonna look like, and then we'll go from there.
So I'm just using the tape as a bit of a, I'm just trying to get this body line sort of pronounced a bit better. Just so I can kind of get a gauge because I'm going to have to match sort of a body line because there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of parallel lines on this car. So until there where it kind of drops out, but at least I can sort of match, match a line because the spear is another one I can use, but when the spear kind of comes to the back, it obviously tapers and I want to make sure that we're not, you know, there's no, no misleading lines. I need to sort of take into consideration a few different lines as well, sort of how we're going to start it. Like this one's really nice. Could almost take that and sort of put it up here, but I want to make sure sort of the, the, it's similar to the front wheel lips as well, or kind of in between. Maybe a slight bit of taper up and then that way. <laughs> Another dish. Oh yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah. And then the back. Back might need to kind of do the same, eh? All right, so I kind of, I don't mind this yet, but what I want to do is I might just spray paint the cardboard black um, and then kind of hold it back up there. And I'd like to just lower the back end as well, just to, you know, that's kind of where you're really going to get the, the overall um, sort of final look that you're after. But I kind of kept the top sort of parallel to the spear as much as I can until it starts to taper. And then what I did was I tried to sort of mat match the radius of the bumper kind of at the top here. And it was, it's also sort of the inside radius to this one as well. So if you can imagine this kind of comes down and then it follows it as well, especially with the angle too, kind of matches the angle of the back bumper as well. Um, and then the front, we just kind of have a nice rolled radius as well. So whew, that's a hot piece of cardboard. If you do the old, you know, squint, and uh, maybe we'll be able to see, hopefully, sort of something we're trying to achieve. And this sweep too, kind of, you know, how we uh, pulled it out a bit and it just pulls back sort of towards the back of the um, bumper. It's just real gradual. So everything kind of, cause this, this falls at a really nice sort of angle and then that kind of pulls it all in. It definitely looks like it's floating, but still obviously in that motion. And I think that's why like, I really wanted to not have this vertical, say with the line of the door, I wanted to have a little bit of kind of forward motion to it, just as if it's kind of going forward. So that's getting traced straight onto the MDF. I don't want to say goodbye when the sun goes down I want to keep you close, want to hold you tight I don't ever want to say goodnight, but you stick around An hour or two will never be enough to be with you Whenever you leave, you leave me long and blue Please, oh please, won't you stick around Bed just a little time, don't go running around. I wanna keep you close, wanna hold you tight. I don't ever wanna say goodnight, but just stick around. 
Well, if you leave, don't leave it oh so long. Come on back where you know you belong. All right, so that cardboard template, we laid it on this piece of um, 25 mil MDF, and then I was able to use the jigsaw and the skill saw and just cut it out. Um, the jigsaw definitely, I mean, it's dense and very thick, so the jigsaw struggled, but we were able to get the radiuses. And then I ended up just throwing a little bit of 80 grit on the DA, and we were just able to smooth those lines right out. And then I've just used the router, and we were able to just run a pass around the edge. Um, I've got the sheet of steel up on the table as well, and what I'm gonna do is just lay this down, um, and then we're gonna trace around it with leaving a, a sort of an edge. Um, as well as I was able to kind of create our top. So I'm hoping we can use this um, as a, a top for both sides. So if I can make this uh, reversible and have the routed edge on the back side as well, then we can get a left and a right out of it. As well as when we go to drill our holes through here, that'll kind of sandwich these pieces together, everything will match up. So it's gonna be kind of a one, one hit shot for both sides. If you can imagine the steel is gonna be between here, and we've left sort of a 20 mil flange all the way around, enough to just be able to get our hammer in there and be able to knock the steel over this edge. So we have it on here now, and what I'd like to do is try and run at least a 20 mil um, sort of a lip all the way around the edge. And there's plenty of ways to do that. I could outline this out, even using some 18 mil tape, and I could kind of make an edge and then trace around it. I've also found that if you have a consistent nice smooth edge all the way around. You can just find something. I usually use a little socket. So I've got a 7 16 socket plus my pencil or scribe. If you tape those together, run that guide along your edge, that's gonna give me exactly a 20 mil lip all the way around. So and we're gonna see how this will work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it kinda needs a little bit of fudging. And we're just gonna run this all the way around and the bigger the lip, or the more material you're gonna try and fold, it's gonna make it really tricky because it's more material that needs to be shrunk. So kind of the shorter, the easier it is. Even 20 mil might be a little bit too much. Um, if so, I can just go back and sort of trim the edge to knock it over. I've had to do that a couple times in the past, but hopefully we'll be able to get this one. So now, we have our initial shape plus the, um, the, the lip all the way around. And that lip is basically gonna be our bit that we're gonna try and roll over and sort of basically hammer form it. So what I need to do now is I'll cut this, we'll clean the edge, make sure it's, there's no burrs and it's clean. And then we can kind of mock everything up as far as drilling our holes. Let's get the grinder set up. So now we have both sides cut out. As you saw, I just kind of made sure they are clamped together and just ran the sander around the edges to make sure they're both equal and the exact same. So now we have a right and a left. And what I'm kind of hoping is, this is what we're gonna try to achieve. So I'll just show you. So this is our base with our rolled edge. This is what we're gonna hammer form over. Our corners are gonna be a little tricky. So I could even kind of pre-shrink pre these areas where we are gonna try and hit them over, but hopefully we'll be able to just do it with the hammer. And then this piece is gonna sit on like that. And then this will bolt through using some counter head, um, countersunk uh, bolts coming from the bottom side. And then we'll just put some nuts on the top here so everything will sit flush. And then this is the lip that we are gonna try 
and hit over. So there's a lot of contour in these areas that we're gonna need a lot of shrinking. So we gotta make sure we can kinda get it down and just, you know, we'll work it very slowly all the way around and hopefully we can get that, that, um, that metal to kinda hug that, that radius that we have in the uh, MDF. What I did as well, just in case um, we can't use this as our other side, I have traced it out already. Um, and that way, so I can cut another one out so we have a left side as well. So otherwise we could, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll work where we can uh, router the other edge of this. Um, some stainless countersunk 316s by two and a half inch bolts and uh, they're gonna work to kind of hold everything together so I ended up using about 10 and then I just ran a bigger bit through just so that these will sit sort of flush mount or even inside a little bit I did it on both pieces of steel so now when I remove everything everything should go back the exact same way so we should have a perfect a perfect match for each side and what I want to do is just show you. So if I disconnect everything, so we have our top plate. These are our bits that we are going to form. So we have two of those, the exact same. And then we have our base as well. So on the base, again, I will just go through and just quickly countersunk these so they can come in from the backside. And we got a nice big 3 16 by almost one inch washer that'll kind of just sit, take a little bit of it there, and we'll be able to bolt this together and start sort of forming. Fingers crossed it, it works out the way we uh, anticipate it to. Basically what I'm going to just try and do is just hammer this edge slowly and just see how close we can get it and if it needs a little bit more work or a few more bolts then um, I'm happy to do so but I'll just trial it and see how we go. And we're just going to be pretty light along there. We're not going to try and hammer this all right here. We're just going to try and evenly go and then just go back and forth, back and forth. It takes a lot of time but fingers crossed. We'll be able to uh, pop this out and go, yes, this is exactly what we're trying to achieve. Okay, starting to get a little bit of shape in there. So obviously in these areas where we have a little bit of curve, the material's gotta go somewhere so it needs to shrink. So that'll kinda happen once we get into those little areas.
So you can see that's a lot of material right here that needs to sort of collect. Um, so there's quite a diff couple ways we could do this. We could sort of heat it up and that would allow us to um, get a little bit more shrink in there. Um, we could also cut it and sort of form it and then we can always just go back through and, and, uh, and weld that and finish it off. But what I'd like to do is just maybe just see if I can keep hitting it a little bit and just see if I can sort of collect it. It'd also be nice if it kind of more shrunk out here. We're trying to get one big shrink right in the corner, but if I could maybe help spread it out a little bit, that's where if we had like a tiny little shrinking pliers, but I could probably just use a couple needle nose and just give them a little twist. Maybe that'll help. On the road, headed back to New Orleans. Driving in the country, past old time he seen. Big birds were singing in the tall willow tree. Mighty fine. Three words written on a paper bag. I miss you was written in a message in black. Thrown in a van to a thousand miles back. A better time. And how many souls and times that I've told places it had want to be and how many days when I could have stayed instead of just getting up to leave all right so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the piece and I'm going to try and take about 10 mil off of it there's there's a lot of material there that I know I won't use um, and that'll really help me try and get some of these shrinks um, in place, having a lot of this less material here. So, you know, that's a 25 mil sort of rollover. If I take 10 mil, it's gonna make a huge difference trying to hammer and dolly that. Um, so I'm just gonna put this back in the vise, undo it, run a scribe around, try and make sure it's as clean as a cut as I can do. And, um, and that way, yeah, hopefully, it'll just make our corners a little bit easier. All right, so as you saw, we just used our big Magnum Sharpie. I ran a, a mark all the way around it, and then we laid this flat on the fab table using our little surface gauge. You know, if this was the table, we kind of scribed a little um, line around the whole thing. And basically when I trimmed that last bit off, it was a little bit inconsistent. 
and there's actually a few areas where we still could lose a little bit more material, allowing it to sort of um, shrink around those edges. So we still have like a good, you know, over the radius, it probably has got another three mil past it, which is perfect. Um, but there's, there, it's obviously not gonna stick out any more than that. And once we have our edging on there as well, it's gonna stick out a little bit more too. So another quick little, I don't know, I just kind of thought of it off the fly was I, I took the little air hammer out, out of the planishing hammer and I've been using this. So I use a little bit of lubrication, which is a mix of transmission fluid and terps. Um, and I was able to sort of run it along and it kind of rolls along the buck. And then I was just going all the way around and just hammering it down and it was smoothing it right out. So I had obviously initially done it with the, the manual hammer and then bringing this over and it was just smoothing everything. So I think once I trim this, put it back in, do it one more time, just get those corners really nice and finished. There's a few little low spots I'm gonna try and knock out. Um, and then I think we're gonna be good to pull this out, have a look at the edges, and then we'll start getting the dies ready in the um, English wheel. Mm -hmm. Not like you'd even care. You go and bother him, he's gonna leave you blue. The echoes of the past will come right back. And now that I'm measuring it, like, you know, we had so much material trying to shape before, but I did that because I wasn't sure, you know, the distance on how much was gonna stick out. But now that I know, the bonus is, is that I can router this edge and um and we can use the other side so i don't have to make another piece which is awesome should be the final time that this right side comes out of here and then we can convert it all to do the left side but what i'd like to do is maybe just spend a little bit of time i'll probably weld up the holes um weld up the holes and make sure they're all planished out. And then I would actually like to spend a little bit of time on the English wheel just to, just to see, you know, overall, like if our shape's gonna be, if our shape's gonna be what we want. But I have a good feeling we've, we've got a good shape. Like that. So, Upon first glance, I've noticed that in this area, it's kicked up just a little bit right there. And that could be due to me clamping too much pressure there and, and hammering against the edge too much. And it's kind of has, the material can't go anywhere. So you really want to try and like hit your hammer down so that the material is pulling down and you're not going to try and hit it square in and then it want to bull nose sort of and, and come up, but. Oh. But I reckon we'll be able to planish that out a little bit. Well, it's definitely got a lot of really nice form to it. That's cool as, holy. Let's hold it up. Let's just, let's see. Let's see what we are looking at. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is so bloody cool. Yup. 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 Very happy with that. All right. So you saw we just kind of held it up to the side of the car and uh, I'm definitely really digging the profile. I um, think it's going to be pretty cool once we start to put a bit of shape in this. So the next step is we need to fill these holes um, that were kind of obviously there to hold everything together. And what I have is just a little piece of copper here that I'm just gonna use as a backing and try and clamp them down flat. And then I'm just gonna try and fill each hole and then we'll just grind them down. Uh, if they need a little bit of a planish, we will do so. Um, and then what we can do after that is 
uh, go and get it set up in the English wheel. That is just gonna try and do a little bit of wheeling on there just to give it a little bit of shape so it's not dead flat. And then we will kind of go in here and start to shrink this edge a little bit once done and we sort of get the, the profile of the car itself. So I think it, um, yeah, it should kind of line up. So we got our lower 36 degree um, bottom lower die in our English wheel. And uh, I think it's like, it's actually the lowest crown that I have. So I'm just gonna do some real light work on the panel itself. And I'm just gonna sort of do like a cross hatch pattern on it. I'm gonna sort of try and count my strokes as well, just so I know for the other side. Um, and then we can kind of look at it and see if we're sort of in the ballpark, hoping we don't kind of stuff it up right away. I'm still, you know, still learning a lot on the English wheel. I'm ha very happy to admit that. Multiple hours on it, but I still feel like I'm, I'm learning a lot and you know, how, how it manipulates and how much it works and stuff like that. That 36 degree lower radius in the English wheel is actually giving me a lot of shape, which you can kind of see if I hold a ruler on it, it's really nice. Um, but that was four passes um, each way, and it was 100 strokes each one. I think one was 101 strokes. So I just counted basically 100. You can kind of see on this side where the crosshatch um, pattern is, and obviously, kind of coming up closer to the ends. Obviously we weren't able to get there because the, um, the upper wheel and lower wheel make contact to our curved edge. Um, inside here, I've actually just hammer and dollied both the top and bottom. Um, and that's kind of just taken a little bit of that low spot that was obviously caused by that. And you can see I've actually put um, this in the shrinker just a little bit, just to start to add a little bit of profile on both sides. And I think now I can kind of get an idea on the profile and kind of gapping that we wanted to, to achieve. Um, I was thinking about pulling it forward a little bit more just to sort of help with the back quarter, but I feel like the breathing room sort of between the bumper and the rear part of the, the skirt itself is, um, is, is quite, quite good. And the profile from this line to this line sort of follows um, and kind of like by the end of it sort of tapers, it's sort of everything kind of pulls into that, that sort of bumper area. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just mark a couple little bits here 
um, where it just needs a little bit more shrinking to just kind of hug that, that quarter panel a little bit. And then on the back side as well, I'll just, um, just give it a little bit through here and that should just pull it in. And I'm not trying to look for, I think a perfect, um, roll because there, this radius here is way too sharp. I think if we do that, we're really going to lose this body line. So if anything, I'll just pull it in a little bit more. And what I might do is just add a little bit of material sort of just in this back corner. And what'll happen is it kind of will just stop sort of like that. I think I'll just disconnect it now and uh, just a little bit more shrinking and then we'll hold it up again. And then we just need to sort of figure out what we're gonna do from the bottom side. probably a little bit too much shape through here, but I kind of like that it sort of pulls in. And what I'm thinking is if I can design something that sort of clips up even in two places in here and here, and then underneath on the front and back, there's like quite a bit of an area where I could make a couple tabs in order to, um, to sort of, you know, do a little screw with a wing nut or or something to hold it in. You can kind of see like the cars laid out in the back. Um, and you know, if I sort of stand back, you can, you can really get, you know, an idea of how, how we want to have it. All right. So we've kind of want to cut this one a little bit short due to probably the length of how long it's taken to sort of hammer form and get one side finished off more focus this video on, you know, the hammer forming itself, shaping on the wheel, um, and sort of using the shrinker stretcher in order to get your three-dimensional shape that you're after. Um, and then in the part two of this will be more along the lines of actually trying to design some sort of like a, a bracket, which I've, you know, we've kind of got a few here as a bit of a sample that we could kind of work off of. I think I have a few ideas that should work as sort of a quick release um, setup uh, without obviously hindering um, or, you know, drilling any holes in the side of the quarter panels because we definitely don't want to do that. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think, you know, for the other side to be able to just like turn it out is going to be really easy purely because I know how much I can manipulate without having to, um, you know, use the torch or, or properly have to try and shrink these corners. You know, figuring out how much I was able to actually shrink rather than um, you know, just kind of pumping it through. So it was kind of cool to have that trial and error in there and, you know, obviously know that, yeah, over an inch and a quarter, I think it was, um, is a lot to try and shape when you're getting into really tight radiuses, especially like what we have on the end here. Now that I've kind of finished this side, um, I can then go along and router this edge, flip this over. We'll be able to flip this over. I'll just drill these out again to, um, allocate for the taper of the bolt. And, you know, I think the right amount of holes seemed to work really well, especially kind of just going with that 3 16 So it wasn't too much to fill using the TIG welder. Um, I was thinking about it afterwards. Another bit that you could use in those is a bit of silicon bronze, um, purely because of the melting temperature of it. So, you know, you're not putting any distortion in there, but lucky having that copper backing plate really, um, gave me no, uh, distortion whatsoever. Obviously it just sucked the heat right out of the sheet metal, which was awesome. I think this sheet was like a hundred bucks, um, all up for that 25 mil MDF. And it's obviously quite hard. So, you know, we still have a whole nother piece there to be able to create another template of some sort. I'll probably end up using it for my roadster where we have to fix the left-hand side inner wheel well. And I obviously want to make sure that we keep those, the swages that they, um, they're quite prominent for. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that and uh, we will see you next week where we finish these off We get Mark across the street to paint him for us. He's standing behind me right now And uh, and then we get him fitted and roll it outside give it a wash and see what it looks like because 
I'm uh, I'm really enjoying this 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 part definitely. Take it forward, driving my brand new ride. Gonna take you in my brand new ride, cause I got a new car and the keys are inside. I'm gonna take you for a ride in my brand new car. Hey guys, just some exciting news as well. Um, we want to make sure that our t-shirts and, and um, you know, kind of our soft goods and stuff is being able to get across to everyone worldwide. We are now able to offer uh, free shipping over uh, $100 US and that way you can get a couple items from the, uh, from the website and we'll be able to ship it free for you guys. So make sure you jump onto our website, have a browse through and uh, if anything tickles your fancy, um, jump on and uh, yeah, support the channel. Thank you very much, you guys.